Hello, and welcome to the Postal Pleasures Channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at stamps from the Canal Zone. Uh, these are from bag one of the Goodwill lot, which I purchased uh, oh, maybe about a month ago now. Uh, it's a small set. I'll hopefully dig into a big set next, either Austria or Germany most likely. Um, I'll post a link up to uh, the next video at the end of this video uh, when it's uh, complete. In any case, let's dig into these from the Canal Zone. So Canal Zone, for those of you who don't know, is um, the um, zone around the Panama Canal in Panama. Uh, so I think it was administered by the United States at one point because I know we were making the stamps, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I guess I should look up on my Canal Zone history. So the first one we have here is quite lovely. Uh, no gum on the back, uh, but a nice bright stamp that I don't see a cancellation on. Just possibly um, a mint one from a collection that lost its gum somehow. And in fact, it looks like there might be some damage in the front, so maybe it was a conglomerate of mint stamps that were stuck to each other. Uh, and had to get soaked apart. Looks like a corner one because we have two flat edges. Uh, what a great airmail stamp. I'll stick that up over here. I think that's in frame. Let's see. I'm going to go with this one of the overprint because I'm curious about it. This one says official Panama Canal airmail. So this is an official stamp and it's a $1 denomination. My goodness, that's a nice one. A high denomination. High denomination stamps are exciting for me. I'm not sure why. Maybe because just many more, many of them don't get uh, made. Uh, so here's another official, um, 15 cent. I'm going to uh, try to put these in order now that I see a couple. At a 20 cent, all the same design. Uh, let me clear that up a little. And this is the same design, but not an official. So let's uh, try to match these one for one and see what we find. If I can get them apart. So again, we have an airplane flying over a boat, which is passing through the canal between some mountains. Really? I'm going to use a finger here just momentarily. They're not stuck. I just can't seem to. There we go. They were stuck a little, but not bad. So a 15, a 6. Maybe I won't match them one for one then. Put the 6 there, and the 6 uh, appears to have a duplex cancel. I think that's still on screen. I'm going to even move that down because I see a 5 here coming out quickly five and I see a ten so I'll move the fifteen a bit lower very nice nice to have um, sort of a, a color set if you will one of each denomination and color makes uh, for an attractive layout so I'm just moving a few around here thirty forty and the one dollar. Looks like I have a ten here, which I skipped before. Uh, let's see if I can do this to move them. No, not well. Just uh, make sure I'm still on screen. I'll probably have to give up. I'm going to move the one dollar right to the bottom because I assume there's no other anything over a dollar there. I, I don't. Um, I have a small. Canal Zone collection, so I certainly am not um, well experienced in them. I don't know the range of denominations in any given for any given stamp. So the five and squeeze in this ten for better or worse. I think that's the limit there on screen. Let's jump to something else. So this is a uh, a Panamanian stamp overprinted Canal Zone. Um, I'm sure you'll see that when I bring it up on the screen. Looks like it also has a duplex cancel. Here's a nice horizontal pair, nice condition. Corners bent on that one, but that'll fold back out. Nice horizontal pair of John F. Stevens. Now this one's gorgeous. Are these mint? Uh, this is a 50 cent Canal Zone postage. Um, Blackburn is the person there. And there's no gum on the back. Uh, so I can't say now, and actually I see a cancel now. Uh, cancel looks like it might be a little bit of a, a violet ink, which is then very similar to the uh, color of the stamp, so it took me a moment to see it. But a really nice linear pair of fairly high denomination ones. Here we have 
Gothels, I believe if I'm pronouncing that correctly, a three cent. And two more of the same stamp, this time in a pair. What's this going to be? Oh, another Canal Zone airmail postage, 11 cent to go with our 10 cent. Also a corner. It makes me wonder if these were uh, in a very small sheet, uh, maybe a booklet pane or something like that. Um, otherwise, maybe a little rarer to have corners if it is from a typically large sheet, if you will. Here's an official, again, Panama Canal. This time, uh, Gorgas is the person. I'll put that there for now. Move it if we get more of the other ones. Here's a administration building, Canal Zone. And here we have an official. You know what, maybe I'll move these two officials over here. And just put them in line with that other official there. I have a dredge of Cascadia's. Really nice. It shows a dredge and then a boat, a ship in the in the background. I'll put that one there. And I think there's another one of those here. So let me grab that. Get the two out together. This time again, another corner piece. Unless it's cut, but it looks looks pretty straight. So I'm gonna guess a corner piece. And let's see. We've seen this fellow before, but this one then looks like a, a coil stamp. So I will put it up here with the other, but this one appears to be a coil. Here's another official. Again, marching this, although the color's a little different, but that could be um, that could be a uh, damage or toning over time. Who knows? Yeah, because that one actually matches that color better than this one, but it's not an official. Maybe there's two different issues that are slightly different color. Again, I'm not an expert here, so I'm going to uh, learn about these a little bit as I'm carding them up and researching them after. Um, after I make the video. Again, I'm seeing these for the first time myself as we do this. So I'm going to put this one up here because it matches that style. I'm going to get the long one out of the way while I still have room for it. Uh, wonderful, nice, clean um, group of three uh, with the circular date stamp and wave cancellation. Uh, leaving this last one mostly untouched, really easy to see the detail. Wonderful set. And here we have one of these uh, more modern looking airmails. I think it's a neat design uh, with the airmail logo and wing over the globe. I don't think we have one of these yet. I'll stick it here. And here we have a new person here. Uh, we have Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt to be exact good stamp. Here we have a uh, a memorial and a, I can't quite get the name. It's under the it's under the cancel there and I'm pretty far away. And here's a single of that one. Now we have a 20 cent here with uh, Rousseau I believe is the person. And lastly a Canal Zone postage and I actually think this one's quite attractive. Uh, I like the it's grayish paper, I would say, um, and with uh, black ink, really um, stands out, gives it some um, formality, which I think looks really, really nice. And this one is Williamson. Again, I don't know who Williamson is, but it's my opportunity to learn. I took a look online and on my um, catalog, and it seems like these um, officials, the official airmails, are quite a pricey set, uh, both in used and mint, but particularly mint. Uh, the set uh, that I have, the complete set here, I believe, uh, was $92 in my obsolete catalog, roughly. Um, so that's that's very amazing to me. Um, but what's got me a little bit more interested, even than that, is that there's two different there's, there's two different varieties in the set. There's the ones the the first ones the first issue where the Panama Canal here uh, is 19 to 20 millimeters, and then there's a shorter one where it's 17. Um, and actually, in this case, this one measures 17. The rest measure 19 to 20. Actually, usually right on 19, I think. Um, but uh, 
And this one's also in a different font face. It's a serif font, a mildly serif font. Um, and so I was, you know, a little bit interested and worried because it's actually these these other ones are extremely rare. The the ones with the 17 millimeter measurement, um, they are several hundred dollars a piece and used. And in Scott, it typically don't have uh, listings except for happens to be this 30 cent one in mint. This one here in Scott in mint has a catalog value over $1,200. Um, and that's in italics, which um, I can't remember what exactly that means, but I'm suspecting it means that they don't have a lot of data to go on there. Um, so, you know, my first question is whenever I have something that seems uh, too good to be true, it probably is. Um, so I went online and I started comparing pictures. And yes, I can confirm um, other ones online on reputable sites like Hipstamp um, have, uh, have this other font or appear to have the same font. Um, everything looks good about it. Again, it is um, mint, previously hinged. Uh, in fact, there's a hinge remnant on this one. Um, you know, I got these um, as part of a uh, set from Goodwill, a lot from Goodwill. As You know, I don't uh, have any reason to believe that there would be someone trying to pass forgeries in this way. But um, I have no idea how often this is forged. It seems to be um, a fairly uncommon stamp. I haven't been reading about any forgeries in the little bit of research I've done so far. So I guess I'm asking um, my audience, uh, if you know anything about these stamps, um, tell me what your thoughts are. Do you uh, do you know that it's uh, maybe uh, really common to find forgeries in this area? Um, does it look good to you? As it, it seems to look good to me, but again, it falls on the, in, in my mind, too good to be true type thing. Um, I don't think I've ever had uh, anything close to $1,000 when it comes to a stamp. Um, so pretty neat find if it's real, um, and certainly exciting even if it isn't. So once again, I ask you all, Tell me what you think.